improving the consistency of auditing. So just a bit of an outline of what the talk's gonna look like. We're gonna talk about auditor training, the annual auditor validation pathway, some system updates, um, troubleshooting, and some future plans or suggestions. So importantly, it's firstly to start talking about well, what does consistency mean? So the Oxford Dish Dictionary defines it as the quality of achieving a level of performance which is not very greatly in quality over time. Or another definition is the conformity in the application of something typically that is necessary for the sake of logic, accuracy and fairness. So we want the data that our auditors collect to be consistent from when they were trained through to years down the track, still collecting the same data in the same way, and we want the data that one auditor collects to be comparable to other data that other, do that other auditors collect. Okay, so we need to keep our auditors consistent. So ways in which we do that to keep the data consistent is in our training. So for gold standard auditors, as many of you will be aware, we run gold standard auditor workshops, and that's run by either a hand hygiene Australia representative or a jurisdictional coordinator. We recommend that each site that submits data has one to two gold standard auditors per organisation. And in my previous talk, you'll see that a lot of sites were actually having a lot more than that, which is okay, but maybe their role is not the same. And if you do want to have gold standard auditors, then we do have an online booking form that we encourage you to use because then we know how many auditors we need to train and we can plan our workshops appropriately. But those gold standard auditors, the aim is that they can go on to train general auditors, so train the trainer model. So a general auditor is trained by a current and validated gold standard auditor. And they use the content that is provided by Hand Hygiene Australia from our website. There's a specific gold standard auditor login, and when they log in, they'll get a page that's called the workshop resources page. And that's not visible unless you use your gold standard auditor login. When you go to that workshop resources page, at the very top of the page, there is a how to train auditors document. And that is key to training auditors that you use the required and mandated documents. So there is a minimum mandatory content. It's five hours of training at a, at a bare minimum, including the pre-workshop online module, the five moments for hand hygiene PowerPoint, how to audit PowerPoint, using the DVD to identify moments and doing some scenarios, doing a practical ward session, doing the written quiz and the DVD quiz, and then giving some local instructions about what to from here. So that is the minimum requirements and the mandatory requirements for training a general auditor. Hand Hygiene Australia holds a list of all current um, gold standard auditors. So if people are ringing us up and saying they're moving from one hospital to another, we have record of them and, and their audit status. Um, but for general auditors, we need the gold standard auditors to register them with us so that we know you've trained other people. And we know that that's not occurring all the time. So it's really important under the workshops tab to go to the auditor register every time you train others so that we know that you've trained them. Because we do have a number of people contact us regularly in a week saying, I used to audit at hospital A, I've now moved to hospital B, and can you please give me access to the database? So we'll go and look for them. And if we can't find them and that they're being trained, it takes a lot of man hours for us to chase up their training details. And if they're not available, then we can't actually grant access and they need to go through a whole new training program to be an auditor again. So let's not waste the training they've already been provided. There are some expectations of program leads that you, that you ensure your auditors are trained appropriately, that you ensure all your auditors are valid, and that you conduct regular meetings for your auditors to keep their skills refreshed to pass on any updates from Hand Hygiene Australia and any local program changes, different wards you might be including in your audits, different ways that you want to do your audits, different education method, um, messages that you want for your hospital. So there's the expectation of the lead person for a facility. The annual auditor validation itself requires every auditor, whether general or gold standard, to collect a minimum of 100 moments and to complete the auditor's online learning module each year. After talking with many of you, this is what you think it is like trying to do this. We'll work out and show you that it can be done. Okay, so in order to manage the annual auditor validation, some key things you can do. Firstly, if you haven't tried using the Users tab in HICAP, you can actually filter for the role of auditor and download your auditors for your site. 
Okay, all our reports in HICAB are downloadable. So if you go to the Users tab, audit, put Auditor in the role, and then you can download a whole list to an Excel file. Then you can go to HICAP and run the Auditor and Sessions report. And when you run this report, you can put it in for a date range rather than an audit period. And that date range will be a year. And when you run that report, you can immediately see in the total moments column who has collected 100 moments. Then you go to the learning management system and you run shortcut report number two, different views depending on which access you have. And you filter for the annual auditor module, you run it over a date range for the completed, and you see who's completed the module. One tip when you're running this report is untick the show latest enrolment box, because if someone's actually enrolled again for the new year in the module, they won't come up on your completed report because they will be currently enrolled and not completed. So if you're missing someone, that is a, a key to check. Now let's do a little Excel 101. What do we do? We've got three reports. We've got our auditor list, we've got our auditor and sessions report with our moments, and we've got our LMS report. Unfortunately, the LMS and HICAP spit out the data in Excel slightly differently. So in, from HICAP, the lists come out with surname, comma, first name in one column. So how do we compare that to the LMS that spits it out into separate columns if we want to check the names? Well, you go to Excel, you put an extra column in after that names column, and then you go to the data tab in Excel and press the text to columns. If you press that, and then you click through all the, the pages that come up afterwards, it will separate your data from a name with a comma to two separate columns. So now they're in the same format for all the reports. We can move forwards. So then you've got your auditor list and your auditor and sessions report, and you can see whether everyone's done 100 moments. You've got your auditor list and your LMS report, and you can see whether everyone's done their online learning module. You can put them all together in one <coughs> list, and if you don't have many auditors, it's very easy to do a visual check to see if everyone's validated. If you've got lots and lots of auditors, then you might want to use the Remove Duplicates button in Excel, or use the VLOOKUP function, which makes it easier to try and see who's completed everything they need to. So we can be done, we can get them there, it just takes a little bit of work. Okay, but is it actually being done? So from the review visits, as I've already showed you this slide before, there are a number of gold standard auditors and a number of auditors per site, but not many are actually completing the 100 moments or the annual online module. And raw data from HICAP and from the LMS is showing Percentages compared to the number of active auditors in the system, in that ones that have collected data in the last year, the percentages per state of who's actually collected 100 moments and the percentages per state of who's actually completed the online learning modules. So depending on where you are, you can either pat yourself on the back that we're close to doing pretty good or maybe look at where you can do some work. But I will point out that in the learning management system, there is an organisation called Holding. And that organisation is when you didn't actually choose an organisation when you registered. So there's 690 auditors out there who are not being checked off the list somewhere because they haven't actually chosen the organisation to send their report to. So if that's one of you, let's see how you can do what you can do to fix that. So some troubleshooting to make annual auditor validation easier and to make sure your lists are up to date. Some things you can do. Firstly, in HICAP, Remove users that are no longer at your site. Keep the lists up to date. Okay, and you do that by going to the users tab in the vertical menu and then editing the list and remove them from your site. So if you don't have them on there, they're not going to have to show in reports that you, they need to complete things when they're no longer with you. Okay, we've also initiated an automatic deletion of users in HICAP for those people who have, were created more than a year ago have never logged in since and have no data against their name, from now on every day those people are being deleted. Okay? So if someone you've created is no longer there, then it was probably more than a year ago you did it. Okay. In the LMS, you can update the organisation you're attached to so that where your report goes to show that annual completion can be up to date. So when you log in on your homepage, there is now a button that says change my organisation. 
When you click on that, it goes back through that registration process of choosing who you want to be attached to and you can update where that is. So if you log in and you press that button and it says you're not attached to an organisation, then that means you're one of those 690 people in that holding um, organisation. So you can update that and you can encourage all your auditors to go and log in and check where they're attached to to make sure they'll appear in your reports. <coughs> you can also update the organisation list in the, organ in the learning management system now too. So if you're an org admin in the learning management system and there's a lot of people attached to your organisation who aren't actually yours, they've kind of randomly put their name there, then you can use the checkbox on the side and pick the not at my organisation and remove them from your site in the LMS. And that will automatically send them an email to say they've been removed from that site and they need to go through and press that change organisation button for themselves. Okay. And then some other things that we've initiated is the creation of a report to function in the LMS where you can be attached to one organisation but you can send your report to another organisation because we know there's a number of healthcare workers that work at numerous sites. So that's something that works in progress currently in the design stage and it will allow those learners to be able to report to multiple organisations. So we're trying to make it easier. So that's the technology side of things, of keeping lists up to date and checking names off lists. But there's a lot of human factors to auditing consistency as well. Okay, And Sally touched on this and Karen's touched on it, but do you actually know who your auditors are? There have been some review visits where we've done where the person we're interviewing does not know who their auditors are. They're the lead for the team, but they don't know who they are. Do you know how your auditors conduct their audits? Is it on their own ward? Is it not? Are they shouting out to everyone as they're going along, hey, I'm auditing, keep doing the right thing? Um, how are they doing it? And do your auditors know where to seek help if they're having trouble? Okay, if you don't know who they are, they probably don't know who you are. So from the review visits show that um, the sites we visited, 33% run refresher sessions for their auditors, so it's not many. And 32% run regular side-by-side -side auditing practice. But only 15% do both, running refresher sessions and doing side-by-side -side -side practice within a year. Okay. There are 29% that do something else though. So some of those are having regular meetings and discussing difficult scenarios, and discussing all aspects of the auditor program. There are some that get auditors to work in pairs regularly, so they're always having someone to feed back and discuss those difficult moments. There are many programs that have auditors who are rotated to different areas regularly. They have a timetable. This audit period you will be auditing these wards. Next time you'll be doing some different ones. The hand hygiene lead in some teams does auditing for a small amount in every ward to compare to that collected by the local auditor in a particular ward. So you've got the comparison of that local auditor, their ward, their auditing, but you've got someone else going in and doing a check. Other sites are doing individual auditor follow-up. So they run the auditor and sessions report. They see someone submitting 100% hand hygiene appliance for the data submitted. So they will do some individual follow-up. Other sites are doing regular email reminders and tips to their auditing team. So they're regularly in contact and in touch with them. Some take home messages though to ensure your auditor consistency. There's obviously some technical sides that we'd like you to keep up to date. So ensuring your HICAP lists are up to date, ensuring all your auditors know what the annual requirements are and actually meet them. But more importantly, we want you to focus on knowing who your auditors are, meeting with them regularly, running refresher se sessions regularly, knowing how your audits are conducted by each auditor at your facility and knowing how your education is provided as well. Are people just out there and auditing and providing no education or they are, are they providing education? With our future plan is to make the process automatic. The, the auditor validation is to link the LMS with HICAP so that it can automatically tell whether someone's completed it. But that does cost a bit of money, so we're still having that on our wish list for a bit longer. But we would like any suggestions that people have of trying to keep these lists up to date. So if you've got some, please feel free to either comment when we have the panel discussion or to, to email us directly. So thank you. <laughs>